In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Christ is risen. Alleluia. And he has overcome death. It's Easter Daily Bread Devotions with Father Eustace Siamé, a selection of Don Bosco. Stay tuned. It is Monday, the 13th of May, 2024, seventh week of Easter, and the fourth day of our novena to Pentecost, and we also keep the memorial today of Our Lady of Fatima. In 1917, Our Lady appeared to three children, Lucia, Francisco, and Jacinta, in Fatima, a small village in Portugal. The apparitions occurred six times from May 13th to October 13th, and the message of Our Lady to the children and to the Christian community can be summarized in the call to prayer and conversion. Participating in the proclamation of the Word of God for today are the following daily bread members. Brighton Mazaiwana, who celebrated his birthday two days ago from Johannesburg, South Africa, takes for us the first reading. Joseph Nguinho Richu and Teresia Nguinho celebrating their wedding anniversary today from Kikuyu, Kenya, Take for us the responsorial psalm and proclaiming the gospel is Father Peter Paul Ibeaga from the Diocese of Mamfe, Cameroon, as he celebrates his birthday today. Let us pray. O God, who chose the mother of your son to be our mother also, grant that persevering in penance and prayer for the salvation of the world, we may furthermore effectively each day the reign of Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. First reading is from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 19, verses 1 to 8. While Apollos was at Corinth, Paul passed through the inland country and came to Ephesus. There he found some disciples, and he said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they said, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. And he said, into what then were you baptized? They said, Into John's baptism. And Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them, and they began speaking in tongues and prophesying. They were about twelve men in all, and he entered the synagogue, and for three months spoke boldly, reasoning and persuading them about the kingdom of God. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm, Psalm 68, verses 2 to 3. 4 to 5 AC, 6 to 7 AB. Response is taken from Psalm 68, verse 33 A. And the response is, You kingdoms of the earth sing to God. You kingdoms of the earth sing to God. Let God arise. Let his force be scattered. Let those who hate him flee from his face. As smoke is driven away, so drag them away. Like wax that melts before the fire, so the wicked shall perish at the presence of God. You kingdoms of the earth sing to God. 
Your kingdoms of the earth seem to God, but the just shall rejoice at the presence of God. They shall exult with glad rejoicing. O sing to God, make music to his name. The Lord is his name. You kingdoms of the earth sing to God. You kingdoms of the earth sing to God. Father of orphans, defender of widows, such as God in his holy place. God gives the disorder a home to dwell in. He leads the prisoners forth into prosperity. You kingdoms of the earth sing to God. You kingdoms of the earth sing to God. Gospel acclamation is taken from Colossians 3, verse 1. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. John chapter 16, verses 29 to 33. At that time, the disciples said to Jesus, Ah, now you are speaking plainly, not in any figure. Now we know that you know all things and need none to question you. By this, we believe that you came from God. Jesus answered them, Do you now believe? The hour is coming. Indeed, it has come, when you will be scattered, every man to his home, and will leave me alone. Yet I am not alone, for the Father is with me. I have said this to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world, you have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We are in the Holy Spirit week as we prepare ourselves to round up the celebrations of Easter with the Pentecost celebration, the birthday of the church, the church that was born with the coming of the Holy Spirit. And we see Paul in his third missionary journey inquiring or challenging the believers. He said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they said, no, we have never even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. <laughs> oh, yes, this may sound strange, but we have so many Christians who have never heard that there is even a Holy Spirit. We have so many of our believers who are so ritualistic that they hinder the role of the Spirit to function in their lives. The Holy Spirit is never chained. The Holy Spirit is the source of innovations. The Holy Spirit is the source of inspiration. The Holy Spirit is the one who comes to you when you are asked, pray, say a prayer for us right now. There are some believers who say, I am not prepared. You did not tell me that I will be the one saying a prayer. Excuse me. If you have been in touch with God all your life, do you need anyone to remind you that you need three, four days to prepare yourself to say a prayer? If you are in love. Do you need three, four days to prepare what to tell your beloved? No, you don't need. It will flow. That's exactly the role of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit makes things flow from us. We speak 
to God like we have been speaking to him all along. And when people ask me to stand to pray, I will not be scratching my head as to what I'm going to say. No, because I'm led by the spirit. I'm not a ritualistic somebody. No, I am a person in love with my God. And I have received that Holy Spirit through the baptism that I got, through the confirmation that I got. And now I am working with the Holy Spirit. I have not put the Holy Spirit on vibration or on silent. No, the Holy Spirit is at work in my life and it is shown through the spontaneity that I display in the way I do things. And when I am asked to do something, I don't have to say, wait, let me think about it. Whatever is good, whatever is noble, whatever is just, I will do it. That's a command. I don't have to wait. Spirited people are spontaneous. Spirited people are enthusiastic. Spirited people don't go through rubrics to understand what they have to do. No, they do it. And they are the reason why we have charisms in the church. Without such spirited people, we'll be having people who only want to keep structures. Of course, we need those people. We need administrators, but we also need charismatic people. We also need people who are able to acknowledge the role of the spirit in their lives. And we see this as the focus of this week's word of God. Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? No, no one has ever told us about the Holy Spirit. The baptism that you received was the baptism of St. John. The baptism of St. John was only the baptism of repentance. It was a ritual. And let us not end at that baptism. We must be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And you will only realize that you are baptized in the Holy Spirit when you start doing things without somebody standing behind you. That's the role of the Spirit in your life. The gospel passage of today in the context of the farewell discourse tells us about the fact that things are becoming clearer because the Holy Spirit has already started working in the disciples. They say, ah, now you are speaking plainly, not in any figure. Now we know that you know all things and need none to question you. That is only the Holy Spirit. It is only the Holy Spirit that can reveal that to you. You can only declare like that when you are led by the Spirit. Because the Spirit makes you understand things clearly and explain things clearly to others. Now Jesus is ready to tell them something more. Because since they understand, then he can conclude the discourse, the farewell discourse. And he concludes the farewell discourse on this note. In the world you have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Wow, 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 wow. You are going to have trouble, he says. You won't be spared because you are a believer, because you are a Christian. No, he promises we are going to have trouble. But what should make us raise our shoulders is the fact that the one we follow, the God we worship has overcome the world. So I am going to carry whatever I am facing with confidence because I am having a God who has overcome the world. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed Monday to you. Thanks be to God.